first heard the when the first collapse happened, which which was kind of like drew us attention. Two minutes later, I felt the second collapse, which was even more insane, more intense. Tonight at five, tragedy in paradise. Dozens missing after a high rise collapses in Miami. We're live as crews continue to dig through the rubble. Again, we will be here as long as we need to be. Plus, neighbor helping neighbor in Arvada. A community pulls together to heal in the wake of the deadly ambush Monday. It's just not something that we ever planned for. And victims of one teenage car thief says she deserves an Oscar for the con she's pulled multiple times across the metro. They're literally bold enough to knock on your door and rob you blind. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Andrew Hill. And I'm Shannon Ogden. We're glad you're with us tonight. The 12 story condo building in Surfside, Florida. This is just north of Miami Beach just collapsed this morning and there is a mountain of rubble nearly two stories tall. Rescue crews are digging through it all tonight and they have already pulled out 35 people from that wreckage. Two of them had to be taken to the hospital. Now the death toll remains a question. Miami-Dade County Police have confirmed one death and said as many as 99 people have been reported missing. Rena Roy has the very latest from Surfside, Florida tonight. The massive search and rescue efforts continue in Surfside, Florida, just north of Miami Beach. Security cameras from an adjacent building captured the moment the apartment building partially collapsed. We have a 12 story, 136 sto uh, unit apartment complex that uh, had sustained a partial collapse. The Miami-Dade Fire Rescue says more than 80 units were sent to the scene. There's not a lot that Little Surfside can do except ring the alarm bell, and we rang the alarm bell and Mayor Cava sent the cavalry, as did the governor. Dramatic rescues playing out in the early morning hours. One victim pulled from the debris pile. Other residents rescued from their balconies. Gabe Neer and his family moved into the building six months ago. They ran outside after they heard the first collapse. We just ran for our lives, and it was nothing but just white, thick cloud of dust, and very hard to, to see and to breathe. It was, it was it was terrible. Florida's governor toured the devastation Thursday afternoon. To be able to see, and the TV doesn't do it justice. I mean, it is really, really uh, traumatic to see uh, the collapse of, of a massive structure like that. Nicholas Fernandez owns two units in the building. Three close friends were staying in one of those condos. I'm not even concerned about my, my unit. I, I, I don't care. It's material. I just want them to be good. The Red Cross now working with city and state officials to help those who have been displaced. Not only are they getting hotel rooms, they're getting help with their medicines, uh, with, with blankets, with clothing, uh, because of course there they are with, with nothing. They were evacuated in the night. Officer Gordon Beasley will be laid to rest on Tuesday. The Arvada officer died in an ambush earlier this week, and Governor Polis has ordered flags to be lowered to half staff next Tuesday in his honor. And for the people who live and work and play in Old Town Arvada, things are starting to return to, war to normal, but given the events of last week, of course, it is far from business as usual. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez is joining us live from Old Town tonight with more on that. Ivan? And if you walk through Old Town Arvada, you might find one of these posters on a business's window. It asked people who come in as, as guests to that business to not ask staff about the shooting because many are still healing. And this comes as more businesses continue to open. I guess it's weird in this day and age, considering how often this happens, to say I didn't expect it here. Jamie Ollier was working inside her store, Balefire Goods, during the shooting, a moment that shook Old Town Arvada. It's just not something that we ever planned for. All of this happening as this quaint shopping and dining center was still recovering from the pandemic. We were doing really well and we were really positive about what this summer was going to hold for us. The Arvada Resiliency Task Force felt most of its work of helping businesses throughout the pandemic was winding down until they realized the community still needed their support. This group was immediately going to get to work and implementing solutions and finding out how we supported the community in a really difficult time. One of the most important ways, face-to-face -face conversations, hugs, and support. We worked with the Jefferson Center for Mental Health, um, and, and they've been fantastic, and they have set up a pop-up clinic here in Old Town for the community as a whole, and we've been communicating out to the businesses to say, like, you know, these, these resources are here for you. Jamie even remembers police officers coming by after losing one of their own. 
asking if they were okay. To me, that was really telling about the type of police force this is. And with the help of Arvada's chamber, the city, as well as the Business Improvement District, we've seen people go business to business asking if anyone needs anything. Work they know will continue for weeks to come. Live in Arvada, Ivan Rodriguez, Denver 7. A lot of good people there. All right, Ivan, thank you very much for that. And if you'd like to help the family of Officer Gordon Beasley, you can donate to at cofallenhero.org. There's also a GoFundMe set up for Johnny Hurley, the 40-year-old from Denver who confronted the gunman in Old Town. We've posted that link on the denverchannel.com. An average of 70 cars per day are being stolen here in the Denver metro, and the criminals are apparently getting younger. Denver 7's Liz Gilardi has this cautionary tale that starts with a knock on the door. It was not dark out, but it was getting dark. An unexpected knock on the door. On the other side, a teenage girl. Basically, long story short, she said that she needed to charge her phone, that she was stranded. Giovanna Vermilli and her boyfriend, John Porst, let her in. They offered her water, even offered to give her a ride. We didn't notice until after she left because nobody's thinking, you know, she's taking our car. After the girl left, they realized the car keys were missing and went outside. Even looking in the spot and seeing it empty, it was like, there's no way that this girl just took our car like how like, it just seemed insane. Police found their car Wednesday in the parking lot of a nearby apartment complex. But as John was trying to find their car, he joined several Facebook groups about stolen vehicles and posted their story. It's a story that sounded all too familiar. Well, what happened was I just had uh, a woman run to my door and frantic that she was being chased and that she was being shot at and she asked if she can use my phone. Um, to call her mom. Then Alexis Simmons realized her car keys were missing. It also hurts that, you know, now I'm a single mom without a car now. Her car, a maroon 1997 Nissan Altima, is still missing. Aurora police confirmed they arrested a 17 year old in connection with Giovanna's case. They're also investigating to see if the teenage suspect is connected with other recent car thefts. They're literally bold enough to knock on your door and Robbie blind. We've talked with three potential victims and they wonder if the teen is working alone and they're left feeling shocked. Someone would prey on their emotions only to turn around and steal from them. I'm a victim of domestic violence and I found it as another woman to help even a younger person put her in a safe position, find her just a safe place for her to be and to know that it was all a lie and she's been telling other people the same story. Liz Gilardi, Denver 7. It's, it's hard because you wanna heal your child but you don't have those capabilities. Next at five, a family's life changes in an instant. No, you're leaving it up to God. Their message for the drunk driver who hit their preteen son and how you can help with their recovery. Plus, a damning report cast doubt on the way our leaders guided us through the pandemic. So nobody was warned or told that any of this was happening. A lot of showers and thunderstorms on that radar picture. Great news as we head into the weekend.